This is the first of three sections that we have for World War II. Um, I will say that this is more world history, but this is where there are certain things that you must know from world history and where the United States gets in, intertwined with the world history um, that we have. So what your focus should be for a lot of these is while these things are happening in Europe, what is going on in the United States? When Japan is making their, their, their moves and expanding their empire, and in Asia. What is the United States doing in reaction to this? So yes, it's the world history side of the early part of World War II, but again, we're, what is the American focus on this for the U.S. history side? Um, for the standards, you're going to find there's a lot of standards that we have, but this is the main one here, causes, course, consequences of World War II. Describe the U.S. response in the early years of World War World II there. Also, analyze the impact of Holocaust during the World War II on Jews as well as other groups. Um, I won't spend as much time on the Holocaust. In this part of the notes, we do a little, a little more class. Plus, this is where that is where in the world history that you had the entire section on the world history of focusing on that side of this. Bracketing dates, um, 1941 is going to be the biggest one here, but they're in the 30s um, also. All right, before the World War II, we have things from World War I that carries over. The League of Nations, it fails. Why? Pretty much the United States won't get involved in the League of Nations. The Washington Conference will reduce net Navy size. The Kellogg-Briand Pact is there. That all these nations signed in 1920 saying that they're going to outlaw war. So we have all these different things that are trying to stop war, but the main problem that you have is signing pieces of paper will not work. So when we get to the 1930s and you're going to have Germany that is, that is breaking the rules and Japan that is breaking the rules, you no longer have the League of Nations there. Uh, you can say you're going to lower the size of the Navy, but when Germany decides in the 1930s to expand their Navy, and Britain and France do not do something against, against it um, here. The Dawes Plan, uh, this is where the cycle of money that, that we had for, we were, we were helping Germany with, with their, um, by giving them loans. Germany was paying off their reparations with those loans, and then Britain and France were using the reparations money to pay back loans that cycle the money, which helped the economy um, there. We will stop um, doing it. It will actually make things work economically. Now what was not in our prior part of the notes was the good neighbor policy. It started with Herbert Hoover and later on we'll, we'll go and um, Franklin Roosevelt will continue um, this. So what the good neighbor policy is, is it's the opposite of the big stick policy. We are actually working with our neighbors to the south in the Caribbean, Central and South America and Mexico. Um, what we will find from this will be the complete opposite of World War I. Where in World War I, we were afraid of Mexico attacking us. We had the Zimmerman note. World War II, you are going to have the Americas, North and South America, that are going to be pretty much united against the Axis powers. Okay. So opposite of the big stick um, policy that we had had. Um, I have this picture because this is where about hyperinflation. Earlier, I had a lesson um, where I was when we were was holding up different bills and what's worth and here. But when a government just prints money, it's it's pretty much worthless uh, there. And this is where when you we don't have the trust in the government. All right, 1930s. This is where we will go in 31. Japan invades part of of China of Manchuria. The world says it's wrong. The United States issues the Stimson Doctrine that says that their claim to the land is illegitimate. But nothing is done for punishing them. There is no League of Nations and nothing happens. So if you're Japan, they will, they will go and look more for expanding their empire. Our talk of everything for pay, peace, they try to do another um, conference, but they, it's a failure. They, they go because they realize this is not working. 1933, Hitler becomes chancellor. Um, I will have a lot of things that are there's there's a lot of things that are similar with Hitler and FDR, although there's a lot of differences also um, there. But Hitler, in the same year that FDR is inaugurated, he Hitler is elected chancellor. Uh, so this is where there's going to be some past. Like Hitler will have works programs. They're, they're both known for their, their speaking that they have. Um, now FDR in 1933 will allow the dollar to drop. Monetary policy is pretty complex, but what when you have a strong dollar, it sounds good, but the strong dollar makes it where imports are, are easier to achieve and exports are more expensive for other countries. So as the dollar drops, it makes it where we can sell more exports. That's good for the United States, which is what FDR wanted, not so good for Europe. 
1935, Italy invades Ethiopia. So this is where Benito Mussolini, and you're going to need to know these all these different um, European leaders uh, that, that we have here. I mean, obviously, I hope that you know for Adolf Hitler, but Mussolini, you're going to need to know. You're going to need to know de Gaulle, Churchill, um, Franco. So you're going to need to know the different European leaders and what countries are leaders of um, here. Even though it's American history, you still have to know that side for it. But Italy, which has, was trying to show that they, that they were some sort of big country, they will invade one of the few free countries in Africa of Ethiopia. It takes them a long time, but they do take over it. Once again, it's, it's showing where an authoritative power is trying to flex their muscle and show their military mark on this. Meanwhile, the United States in 1935 will pass their first Neutrality Act. Um, we will say that we're not going to sell anything to anybody that's causing problems, the belligerents um, here. You will notice that that's the reaction the United States has year after year. We'll pass a neutrality act. We say we're neutral. Um, and as we go along, we're going to be less and less truly neutral even when we say it. 1936, in world history, you should have spent a bit of time about the Spanish Civil War. Um, I kind of make a long story short as we have fascism and democracy that are fighting there in Europe. United States, Britain, and France are supporting the de democratic side of this. Um, Germany and Italy are supporting the fascists. The U.S., Britain, and France, they basically are good for cheering them on, but not actually truly helping them. Meanwhile, Germany and Italy are giving them financial aid, military aid. So who do you think is going to win in that case? And yes, it is Franco, who is uh, the, the leader of the Spain that you need to know, who wins in the fascist win. And this is kind of where some people see as a... Um, is this a precursor for what will be World War II and fascism being stronger than democracy uh, there. Germany is going to move into the Rhineland. Hitler had for the years before that had been slowly breaking more and more of the rules that were written in the Treaty of Versailles. He was rebuilding his navy. He was um, expanding his military. Now he moves into the area of the Rhineland which he was not supposed to. Britain and France react with a whole lot of gasp. And you can't do that, but they don't actually do anything. And this is where militarily France could have gone or Britain could have gone and stopped Germany in their tracks right then. Oh, by the way, the United States, we issue another neutrality act to make sure you know we're ne neutral. And if you are a bad guy, we're not going to give you loans either. 1937, Japan invades more of China and keeps, and over time, keeps taking over more and more. Um, Japan, what is their goal? Their goal is to be controlling all of Asia and, the, and that side of the Pacific. And here's where we kind of look, and I, I know in the room I have this map, and pretty much you divide the map into three parts. You have the, the one side of the map where Japan wants to control Asia, you have the other side where, where Germany wants to control Europe and Africa. In between is North and South America, and this is where, even for, for Hitler, most of the things, he was not wanting to go and take over the United States. Um, there he was basically thinking that you can almost split the world up into those three sections um, that, that you have. But Japan invades more of China. This time we give a speech um, to it, but we still don't actually do any, anything about it. The, in this attack, the, the United States ship, the USS Panay, was sunk by the Japanese. Now, where we saw the movie Midway and you see these giant flags painted on the decks, um, and here this is where you say how this happened. Now. The United States, the people, they kind of look and say, why are we over there, given this isolationist idea that we have. Um, Japan apologizes and says, well, you should not have been there. We're going to see the same thing happens later on with the USS Reuben James um, when the Germans sink it. And a lot of Americans that, again, won't, just don't want to get involved. Meanwhile, the government issues the Third Neutrality Act, which we're not going to ship any arms to now the fascist country of Spain. All right, this is extremely important, what you would spend a long time in world history. Um, hopefully you have this, but this is where the different things have. First of all, I'm going to skip to where Mein Kampf. Mein Kampf was the book that Adolf Hitler um, wrote while he was in prison after World War I. My struggle, it is a bunch of ramblings that it goes on. Some of my students have had this had of time, so they tried to read the English version of it. But if you were to go through these ramblings, there's certain things that you can go. And it's a vision that Hitler has for the Third Reich, where we have the first um, German Empire, the Holy Roman Empire, the second one late 1800s. So what were to become an empire and grade. And this is where he expresses his views on 
on what, what should be done for lesser people. An example he gives in Mein Kampf of what to do for unwanted people is the United States of America and our treatment of the Indians. Kill off as many as you can, put the other ones in to the concentration camps, which our reservations used to be called the concentration policy, um, and try to retrain them not and make them, and we say assimilate, but that's where the Dawes Act, where we had the schools that were, were made to, to change the idea of of the of the Indians and take away their their culture. Um, he also wrote though about the expansion of Germany and the different steps that that should be done and to unite the German speaking people. The first step was to unite with with Austria and that's what Anschluss is. It's a union between Germany and Austria. Those of you who've seen the movie the, um, the Sound of Music, that's where the Von Trapp family, that they're in Austria and the father who's in the, the Austrian Navy and he doesn't want to be part of this. And so it is a peaceful union um, and so Germany starts to expand. One of the biggest events ever in world history is the Munich Conference. In this Hitler demands the Sudetenland. It's a very small area on that map, it's that little part of yellow um, around, around the areas, some parts of Czechoslovakia. Um, the key thing about this, and I'll come about what's significant for that area, was Hitler said, give it to me, that's the last part that I want um, in there. And British and the French leaders, and Neville Chamberlain was the leader for the British, they'll allow it. Okay? Meanwhile, it's going to be criticized by the future leader of Britain, Winston Churchill, says that all you're doing is appeasing um, Hitler and you're giving him what he wants. Meanwhile, Chamberlain, Chamberlain is thinking that this is making peace forever. Um, Spoiler alert, Hitler lies, he'll later over, let, take over the rest of Czechoslovakia um, there. Now what's significant about Sudetenland? Where in Mein Kampf, Hitler wrote about all these areas that, that, that Germany needs to take over. Of all the areas that he wrote, the Sudetenland would actually be one of the toughest places for him to militarily take over. The, the uh, terrain of that area was, is not something that's conducive to Blitzkrieg style of warfare. Um, and so. What ends up happening is the place that would be the toughest for Hitler to take over is just handed to him. All right, kind of skipped a little bit here and a quick review again. In class, I actually spent longer time on this um, and not just where the Holocaust in Germany, but come back and kind of review back over some of the things that we had for the United States where in the United States, our, our Jews are not treated um, very very well. We have a lot of discrimination against them. The KKK in the 1920s, that would be one of their targets. We would also have have the, K, the, the top person um, in the history of radio with Father Coughlin, um, when, when he would be very anti-Semitic um, during the 1930s as for his audience that, that he would have. But again, Hitler will write his views and, and Mein Kampf, he writes that the for the lesser people, and it's not just Jewish people, we have homosexual, the Roma, we have different ethnic groups that are going to be targeted and will eventually be put into the concentration camps that you have um, there. Um, and I say, why are the Jews the scapegoats? And I kind of go through a longer thing, but this is where a lot of this is not just being different, but part of this is for a lot of the Jews because of the diaspora they had after the Roman Empire split them up, the one thing they had was education. So many of the Jewish People are highly educated and some of the jobs that they are in, whether it be a banker or accounting or a jeweler or lawyers um, there. And a lot of times people are suspicious of people that are, that are very highly intelligent. Um, there. We're going to see a lot of the scientists that are, are also Jewish in here. Um, so it's a small part of the population um, that, that, that you have. Now, for world history, you should have spent a little bit of time on the Nuremberg Laws. I summarize this a lot, but this was the legislation that is no longer rhetoric. They actually make legislation that will restrict the rights of the Jews. This is when they're restricted for businesses and where they can live, where they can travel. And like when they're traveling around, they have to have their papers that have a big J on them, um, where the Star of David was re required for, for them to be, to be put and identify them. And this is where, before this, there had been some Jewish people trying to escape Germany, but a lot would try to escape at that time um, there before things even got worse. During the war, when Germany would, uh, would go through other areas, in particular Poland and other Eastern European countries, they would go after the, the Slavic people. And, and this is where, if you can imagine, if you are Polish and Jewish um, there, what discrimination you were. And a lot of the concentration camps um, that were 
were built were built in Poland um, that that time period. Now the concentration camps are going to come about later on. Like you see, the Nuremberg Laws are in '35. Later on, we will have the work camps that will turn into the death camps as the war goes along. Um, I don't think this is in your note packet, but this is where where I've kind of noticed that students a lot of times don't just know this phrase, but the final solution of Hitler, and this is the idea of genocide and to get rid of it. And again, in, in uh, Mein Kampf, he, he kind of again used the, the United States as an example uh, for, our, for what we did with the Native Americans. Now, this persecution of Jews, how did this help the U.S. war effort? Give a hint on here with Albert Einstein. A lot of scientists that, that will leave Germany will come to the United States. They'll be working on the Manhattan Project for the nuclear bomb. They're going to be working on the early things for rockets and other um, things that we have. And so Hitler will actually use, lose a lot of brain power um, in his persecution of the Jewish people. Meanwhile, for the United States, 1939, we're going to have a ship of 900 Jewish refugees that are going to come to the coast. And no, we do not accept these refugees. We will not allow them to get off the ship. The ship has to return to Europe and countries like Belgium, the Netherlands, and France will take a lot of these refugees. Many of them will later on be captured uh, and disappear after the, the Nazis take over those areas. In March of that year, Hitler, oh my goodness, he lied. Um, and then the Sudetenland was enough. He takes over more of Czechoslovakia. In August, we will have one of the strangest unions in history as the, the parts of the plan were, were, were more secret, but the overall idea that we will have a peaceful pact between Germany and the Soviet Union. Um, Joseph Stalin and Hitler did not trust each other or like each other, but they also will end up, in the case of Hitler, using Stalin to his advantage. So there, some of the things that are discussed in this is where Hitler says of his plans. Hitler says that he is going to eventually take over part of Poland, not all of it. So. Stalin, if you want the rest, and Hitler says, I am the Scandinavia, I need Norway, but the rest of it you could have. So this is where, now why is Norway important? This is the military side, is the fjords were perfect places in the North Atlantic for the German submarines to come in and out of to refuel and to resupply on there. So that's why Norway is important to, to Germany. Uh, Stalin was very distrusting of Hitler, but he, he agrees to this plan, and then later on he sees, oh, Hitler's living up to it. But, surprise, surprise, Hitler will eventually stab Stalin in the back. But Hitler's trying to avoid the problem that, that the, the, the um, country of Germany had in World War I of a two-front war. September, Germany will invade Poland with the Blitzkrieg attack. Blitzkrieg means lightning war. And you come, you bomb the heck out of them with your with your uh, air force, you then come in with the artillery and the tanks rolling through, and the and and then the uh, the infantry afterwards. Britain and France were supposed to protect Poland, and oh my gosh, they are surprised. Even though Hitler pretty much writes and tells what's going to happen in Mein Kampf, they need to turn the page and read what's going to happen next. But. Germany takes over part of Poland um, there. Britain declares war, France will declare war in other places on Germany. It looks like we're going to have this war. Germany swings their army around to, to the border of, of France and, and Germany. Meanwhile, the Soviet Union will take over Finland, the Baltic States, takes over part of, of Poland that, that, that Germany didn't have. And for several months, we're going to have what's nicknamed the phony war. Uh, the German troops and French troops are on both sides of the border, but neither one is attacking each other. There will be apologists in Europe and the United States that are going to go and say, well, look, here, Germany actually isn't that bad. Hitler said he just wanted to unite all the German-speaking people. He didn't take over all of Poland. He's just gone for here. And so we actually have this, and we have people like Kennedy that's our... our um, Ambassador to Britain and Charles Lindbergh in the United States that are part of this American First Committee that are, they're not truly Nazi sympathizers, but this is where they're saying the United States doesn't need to get involved. Meanwhile, the, for officially side, Congress will, will make the Neutrality Act. We will allow for um, our friends to come and buy weapons um, off of us for cash. Here's what I was saying about for with Mein Kampf and the example that we had for that Hitler had of the of the U.S. Um, with the Native Americans. All right, this map down here kind of shows then where where Hitler is. You see, for Poland, the part in yellow is the part that 
that Germany took over, the part in green, the Soviet Union took over. And you see, this is pretty much the German-speaking people, so that's where we are on history. Um, here are a beautiful couple of Stalin and, and Hitler, and again, sorry to foreshadow on this, but Hitler's going to stab Stalin in the back in a, in a little bit. All right, 1940, the phony war, war continued on for a little bit, but then finally Germany attacks. But they do not attack France across the border. France had made the Mendeau line a very good line of defenses on their border with Germany and France, and an incredible group of defenses just in case Germany was going to ever attack. Well, Germany knew that, and they just went through Belgium instead, and they came in the backside and quickly took o o over France. Germany just doesn't attack France. They also take over Denmark, Norway, the Netherlands, Belgium um, here. Mussolini wants to get involved, and Hitler pretty much says, yeah, and he takes over a little chunk of, of southern France. Now, for France, they're set up. You have the German-occupied territories, you can see in the map, bottom part by Italy, but we'll have Vinci France. Now, Vinci France is not truly a free country. It's a puppet government of Hitler. Puppet governments when they are answering to, some, to someone else. Uh, once again, we still have apologists that are saying that that Hitler, I mean, he was just trying to get rid of that threat now. Um, the French soldiers, they will have around 300,000 soldiers that were literally sitting on the beaches that are evacuated, and Hitler will order the, to not, to them not to be shot. And here's where some people say, well, look, he's just trying to get rid of that threat. If, he, if Hitler won to, he could have gone after them, and he doesn't. Um, here. If you watch the movie Dunkirk, this is where the British soldiers that are, are being evacuated at that time with the French also. Um, in there. So that's what where that's about. Um, that was not Hitler's nice moment in there. What Hitler is hoping for is that if only Britain is left standing, then they would surrender. But the British will not surrender. Meanwhile, what's really important for the United States is now the, the Axis powers will no longer be just Germany and Italy. It is going to be Japan and the tripartite plot. Why? Again, I kind of go back where I have the map of the, of the three parts of the world. The United States does not want Germany to win. They do not like Japan. But the United States, the people do not want to fight a war, much less two wars. So it is beneficial to both Germany and, and um, Japan to have this alliance, and that way the United States will hopefully stay out of the war. Um, and for Japan, it gives, them a re it gives them a little bit of leeway to go after like the French um, colonies in Indochina, the Indonesian colonies. Um, Indonesia colony that Netherlands used to have um, in that way. Reoccurring question you're going to, to see will be about make sure you know the difference between the Allies and the different Axis powers. I will tell you that the one that get people make the most mistake is they think the Soviet Union is part of the Axis when they are part of the Allies. They are a friend in World War II, they won't be afterwards. Um, different timelines. This is one that has been on some different type of questions that you may see on the EOC or something like this. And the idea, and this is where a lot of the authoritarian powers like Hitler, Franco, Mussolini, they want to take over areas. And this kind of shows conquest because that shows your might um, there. Um, this is actually what I was saying about how the French made their, their defenses, but the Germans came, came through the backside through Belgium. All right, 1940, we will have the only time in U.S. history that a president will be elected to a third term when FDR wins against Wendell Welk Wilkie. He'll win a fourth term four years later. That cannot be done be after this because of, because of this, we will add and make the 26th Amendment, which will then take the unofficial rule of only serving two terms official. The U.S. will place the embargo on steel and oil to Japan. That is actually extremely important. The very first part of the movie Midway that I say pay attention to is where the, the, Ger the German admiral is saying to, to the American, do not push us in the corner. Well, around 75% of the oil and steel that Japan bought was from the United States. When we cut this off, we're basically putting their war machine on a time timer. They have less than two years worth um, to have it go full speed. So we've pushed them into the corner um, there, which we know then that they're probably going to attack. Meanwhile, the U.S., we passed the Civil Service Act. Remember, civil service means draft, so we're drafting. We're not in the war, but we're preparing for the war. The Battle of Britain begins. This is an air war, and how's Britain going to survive? This is where I use some of the, the examples and we, where we saw America's story of us and a different style of, of fighting, 
But the British, with between the radar and their blackouts that they're going to have, and just, it sounds kooky in this way, but just basically the perseverance of the people that night after night survived this um, there. And this is where um, they will continue to survive. Meanwhile, it's only a small part of the notes, but actually really important um, there, probably your most common EOC question off of this whole section. The United States that year will pass the Lend-Lease Act, which will help those vital to defense of the U.S., which is mainly Britain, but we're going to see other countries that we have. Now, we're still saying we're neutral, but yeah, now we can't even hide it because we're going to lend, lease, help out basically Britain and anybody else that we see that's against on the Axis powers. Meanwhile, we have a lot of people still in the United States that are part of the America First Committee and are isolationists. Again, here's Charles Lindbergh, and they're not wanting to be a part of this. Again, they weren't truly Nazi sympathizers, although there's some that, that might be uh, with this, but this is where they are ones that, are, many of them are pacifists. Many of them are, again, they're isolationists on there, and they don't like the idea we're getting involved. A lot of different things for the Lynn Lee Act that you can see. Here's a, it's actually a Dr. Seuss um, cartoon where they're just dumping in things as U.S. Lynn and Lease. Here's a chart that we have. Again, it's not just munitions. You see agricultural products, industrial, what nations we send things to. Britain's the biggest, but we'll send to China. We'll send to the Soviet Union. Um, the Heil Lindbergh and the American um, First Committee thing. Uh, we've had a poster like this on questions uh, before. And again, that great arsenal to democracy comes from the FDR speech of where we need to help out with the Lend-Lease Act. One, one year, an EOC had a cartoon that was sort of, sort of like this um, in here, where, again, you have Uncle Sam in this case. We've had a lot of different political cartoons um, over the years, maps. Again, um, Lend-Lease Act is, is really important for where the United States, even though we are saying we're neutral, we're still involved. But not only is that, we're actually going to have what's sometimes called the land lease with basis for a destroyer bill. We will give to Britain a bunch of destroyers, so ships that can fight uh, there. And in, in return, uh, there the British will give us their land, which we're basically taking care of. And I say, how does this help Britain doubly? Well, we give them these ships, and then the soldiers and supplies they needed for their overseas in the North America and South America, they're able to leave and go fight Germany while we then protect that land for them. The Atlantic Charter, um, this is the first of, of the meetings that we will have of the international meetings. In the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, our President Roosevelt will meet with, with Churchill, the British leader, and they're going to make through their plans for after we win the war. Yes, FDR is planning for when we win this war that we're not even in. So, is he planning to be on this war? Yes, yes he is. There. The biggest of these plans is we're going to start the UN. So, the League of Nations that Wildrow Wilson tried to have, that we ended up killing, we're going to now bring it back um, in there in a different form, but the UN. Meanwhile, the Battle of Britain continues. Hitler gets a little bit impatient, makes what some people say will be one of his biggest mistakes of the war militarily as he goes ahead and double crosses Stalin and starts an attack of, of the Soviet Union and takes over huge chunks of the Soviet Union in a short period of time. Japan, meanwhile, will start taking over the French colonies of Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. And here's where FDR, when he gets involved, he will have it where he has... He had what some people say even a military action that if our ships see German wolf packs are allowed to shoot to defend themselves. And for FDR, it looks like what he wanted to happen, something that will get the Americans ticked off, happens as the Germans sink a US, uh, the USS Reuben James um, in here. And so the Americans are going to get mad about this, but no, they don't. Um, the, the Germans will apologize for this, but at the same time they will say, your ship was in an area where we're fighting a war. And so Americans, again, isolation said, well, maybe we shouldn't be there. All right, um, there, we, if we accept. So the same as what happened earlier with Japan, the same thing happens now um, where things are escalating. And, and FDR knows he cannot ask for a declaration of war and join with Britain and France unless the American people support him. And at that time, they still don't. But what will change will be in 1941 on December 7th, um, there, when, surprise, surprise, we're attacked at Pearl Harbor. Is it really a surprise? Well, we'll spend more time and actually have some readings and look at, at that, but 
here's where there were a lot of signs. But if you were, and it's really easy with 2020 vision to go back and look and see and hindsight say, yeah, we, they should have known this was coming. We knew an attack was coming, but if you were to look at the information they had at that time, you would look and you would probably say, where are the Japanese going to attack? You would say, it's the Philippines. I mean, that's the, that's the obvious place. But the Japanese are going to use their aircraft carriers and be um, able to use, use the aircraft carriers and have this surprise attack. Um, and they do not do a knockout blow. They take out um, a lot, about 11 of our battleships at Battleship Row. I mean, the most famous of yet of those is the, Air, the Arizona. Uh, we will have over 2,000 Americans that are killed. But there's certain mistakes that the Japanese make. There's two groups that they, of ships that they did not have. Our aircraft carriers happened to be out on, on basically doing some exercises and they did not get our aircraft carriers, which the Japanese did not realize how important aircraft carriers were, even though this, that was a success for the, the Pearl Harbor. They went after our battleships, which was the old way of fighting. Aircraft carriers and submarines are the new. And for our submarines, our submarines will be in a little side harbor on, on part of Pearl Harbor and they won't attack them. Meanwhile, the Japanese will attack some of our hospitals, which we will use as some of the reasons when we drop the bomb the atomic bombs. Another big mistake that the Japanese did is they did not go after our oil and gas stores. So yes, they have ships, but we still had that for the, the fuel that, that was there uh, in it. The day after, after the attack, FDR will give his famous Day of Infamy speech. The United States will declare war on Japan. Three days later, Germany and Italy will declare war on the United States. I say why? Well, again, that tripartite pact. Meanwhile, Hitler is really upset with Japan because he does not want the United States involved and pretty much the United States now gets involved and even as for the Japanese leaders as known they said I've woken a sleeping giant on um, there Hitler realizes this when he, when he thought the United States would try to with an isolationist stay out but now we are provoked to the point that we do get get it, get involved um, here so, our next section will go over more on the military side for the United States um, after Pearl Harbor. Um, even though it's Japan that has attacked us, we, were, we will have a plan in the Pacific, but our focus is actually going to be to go and try to help Britain before they fall against Germany and then come back and here. The little Hitler one's up from um, Adult Swim is a, is a funny one for you that you should, should watch in here. <laughs> 